Hello children. Good morning. Good morning, the blue. Good morning. How are you guys? How are you? How are you guys? Yes, it's great. Okay. Is how things are going on? How you guys are studying? Great. Okay, children. Welcome back to session. In today's session, we are going to start with new chapter. Good morning again, W Beta. Good morning. Okay, so shall we start the chapter? Hi, Nag Nagapuja. How are you, Beta? How are you? Yes, you got you guys keep joining, right? <laughs> it's really good to see your messages. Okay. How are you, Naga Puja? How are you doing? Great. Okay. So I think few students are able to join. Okay. So without uh, taking much time, Yes, yes, beta. Let's start the class. Okay. Yes, children, in today's class, we are going to start a new chapter that is Animal Kingdom. I am super duper ex excited. Okay. Yes, it was my favorite chapter, hai, beta. Animal Kingdom. Children, before starting this chapter, I would like to tell you one thing. From need point of view, this chapter is very important, even from both point of view. Okay. So this chapter is having very good weightage. And once you look at your NCRT, you find that Aray Babri, itna sara phylums hai, itna sara characteristics hai, itna sara features hai, kaise yaad rakhenge? See, don't worry, as in then wherever possible, I'm giving you tricks, one thing. Second thing, for this chapter, please, 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 please stick on to your NCRT, okay? So please stick on to your NCRT, don't deviate from NCRT, okay? And I request, I start explaining explaining this chapter as i start discussing this chapter please i request all of you to open your ncr book and keep with you okay as i start explaining as i uh, I'll, you know uh, give important uh, abbreviations or you know uh, explain definitions please note down please note down in your textbook children this is this is very important okay okay done thumbs up because this chapter, you're not supposed to deviate from NCRT. Otherwise, you're going mad. Okay. So, this is very easy chapter. Please stick on to NCRT and then start. Okay. Yes. So, chalo. You know, animal kingdom. Why we have this kingdom and all? See, on earth, we have many, many millions, billions of organisms, right? So, to study them in a systematic manner, we need classification. Accordingly, we have uh, done biological classification, right? So, we have different kingdoms, right? You know, Monera, like, which mainly encloses bacteria, then Protista, single cell eukaryotes, and then fungi, uh, all mycota, and then plant, kingdom plantae, and then kingdom animalia, right? Yes. So, animals are highly evolved organisms compared to other kingdom right yes so even inside animals we have so many animals some lives in water some lives on trees some lives on land and some are very small some are unicellular some are multicellular you know there are many uh, differences among animals also right yes so based on certain features we classify animal kingdom also we classify animals also on different classification different features okay let us see what are the basis for classification of animal kingdom okay children first and foremost criteria good morning rajneesh welcome to session okay i have started with animal kingdom please follow up with okay yes see basis of classification first is arrangement of cells 
like how cells are arranged in an organism whether the organism is single cell or that animal is multicellular or it is having any tissue or organ like to what extent it has you know evolved so that is arrangement of cells and second criteria is body symmetry you are i'm going to show you what are the different types of symmetry okay see i if i if you people cut into me like cut me into two halves you're getting only two halves equally if you cut me through this plane right if you cut me diagonally you are not going to get two equal halves so this is symmetry there are different types of symmetry and we will be discussing what are those different types of symmetry okay and nature of coelom coelom children don't worry coelom means body cavity okay so i'm going to uh, dis discuss and explore more about this body cavity and what it means and what are the different types okay and at the last we are considering the systems like you know digestive system circulatory system and reproductive system so including all these criteria we are going to classify the animals and we are uh, you know learning the different phylums in detail okay yes children so let us start with first levels of organization okay this is first criteria right as i mentioned levels of organization is the first criteria of animal classification children on left hand side i had put an uh, image from your ncrt okay it might appear you know confusing at this point of view for for you guys if you are looking at this image for the first time don't worry this is very important image and this is very important flow chart you need to remember if you know this flow chart your animal kingdom 50 percent is done for you okay so please note this this flow chart is very 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 important okay better is it clear, Dudlu? Is it clear, Rajneesh? Is it clear, Pooja? Yes. So let us start with levels. See, you know, when you look at the organism built up, you, you, you take any organism, you take anything. So cell will be fundamental, right? There are few organisms which are just single cell. To mention few, you have bacteria, right? Yeah. Thank you for your response, guys. Thank you, Dudlu. Yeah, bacteria you have you know uh protest all protest like you glean up paramecium diatoms uh, plasmodium all these are protest they're all single cells okay all the function what function like digestion excretion um you know respiration everything takes place inside cells okay yes but now see at home at home if you do all things you know washing the dishes uh washing cloth sweeping cleaning the floor mopping the floor cooking along with your studies along with the homework it will become very difficult for you for one person to handle right so then the concept of division of labor division of labor arised during evolution division of labor division of labor what is this division of labor children see imagine in your school you are you know uh, making some function like farewell party or welcome party or some some gathering day something okay so here you do committees one committee welcome committee one committee you know uh gift delivering committee one committee cultural committee food committee one is miscellaneous like this you are going to divide the work such that your efficiency will improve and you know the job will be the the or uh, the event will be you know executed very neatly with less time more efficiently right the same way what cell started th thought okay instead of focusing ourselves on all job let us distribute work then arised tissues group of cells performing similar function you know yes so do as a concept of division of labor tissue started where group of cells started doing you know similar function so there are some organisms which are having tissue level organization you can see here the chart cellular level example best example is porifera phylum okay so in animal kingdom only porifera is having cellular level organization okay yes and then you can see cylindrata it is having tissue level organization okay now tissue started tissue started 
grouping to make organs. Tissue started grouping to make organs. You can see in as calamities, you started organs. And in higher system, higher, you know, um, phylums, higher animals, organ system started merging to make sorry organs started merging grouping to make organ systems like you know digestive system respiratory system okay excretory system circulatory system like that organs group to make organ systems in higher animals like you know uh, it may be mollusca or it may be you know chordates okay all these are having organ systems so now we have many organ system inside an organism right yes so children here in this slide hope it's very th everything is clear for you level of organization is very important criteria you can see here okay level of organization only porifera is having cellular organization children please note this so if you keep on comparing what you study with this chart your animal kingdom 50 percent you will be having with in your hand okay yes children shall i go to next criteria now i have done with you know levels of organization the first criteria for classification shall i go to next can i have your response children quick response can i have your response yes thank you so much the blue okay so here children along with you know uh criteria i'll be introducing you to some keywords some keywords thank you puja for your response yes i'll be introducing you to for some keywords which you frequently come across in your animal kingdom chapter okay so if you understand these keywords what these terms mean then you feel it easy uh, while we discuss phylum so first you know we'll take up digestive system children in digestive system we mainly have two types of digestive system first type of digestive system is called incomplete digestive system and second type of digestive system is called complete digestive system okay yes incomplete incomplete means animal will be having only one opening see single opening if any animal is having single opening in the digestive system then that that type of digestive system is called incomplete digestive system got it so both input and output will be happening through the same same opening say for example this is animal okay and it is having only one opening in the digestive system this is digestive tube of the animal and it's having only one opening and both input and output happens through the same opening okay so such any such digestive system is called incomplete digestive system is it clear children incomplete digestive system is it clear yes so going back to your slide see from porifera to platyhelminthus first four phylums are incomplete digestive system these four phylums are best example for incomplete digestive system children okay see this chart is very uh you know meaningful that's why i'm uh, i'm just coming back to this flow chart again and again clear yes yes w beta if both input and output happens through same opening then such type of digestive system is called incomplete digestive system you are absolutely right w yes you are absolutely right any doubt in incomplete digestive system children any doubts in incomplete uh, digestive system and examples are very similar from sponges porifera to platyhelminthus flatworm okay this is example of flatworm the image what you're looking here okay so from porifera to flatworm good morning puja yes welcome to session again it's okay puja it's okay i've just started with few introduction for missed part you can watch replay of the session okay yes 
Yes, no doubt, the blue, yes, thank you. Yes, now coming to second type of digestive system. Second type of digestive system, that is complete. If an organism is having two openings, if an organism is having two openings, means see, look at this picture. This is the picture of earthworm. In earthworm, you have see, see mouth and you have seen anus. The same way this is frog. Frog is having mouth and anus. Okay. So the digestive system is having two openings. One is mouth and one is anus. Mouth is for input and anus is for output. Such animals having, you know, uh, this type of digestive system is called complete digestive system. Whenever a digestive system is having two openings like mouth and anus, one is for input and other is for output, such digestive systems are called complete digestive system. Clear, children? Clear? Yes. Now see, coming back to your chart, coming back to your chart, from as calmentus to chordates, put all the phylums you have, they are all having complete digestive system. So it's very clear. From porifera to platyhalmanthus, P to P, can you see? What is the trick to remember? Only you have two P's in the, all the phylums. See, porifera, cilentrata, tedophora, platyhalmanthus, ascalmanthus, anilida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata, hemichordata, and chordata. Among these, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 phylum, only two you are having P, starting with the letter P. So from P to P, you have incomplete digestive system. And whatever comes after the second P, all are digestive system. Is this trick is okay for you guys? P to P are incomplete. P to P are incomplete. Is this clear, children? Is this clear for you guys? P to P is incomplete. And of to P, whatever you have, they are all having complete digestive system. Children, is this clear for you? And this trick is helpful? Yes. Thank you, children. Okay. So now coming back to, yes, I'll be clear, uh, giving you some clues, okay? Like how to remember these uh, phylums in an order. So once I complete the keyword definition, some important concept, I will definitely give you how to remember this all 12 phylums in an order. Okay, don't worry. So any doubt in digestive system? Any doubts in digestive system? No, right? Okay. Yes. So now we are going to discuss about circulatory system we are going to discuss about circulatory system okay children circulatory system is mainly meant for you know flowing of blood why it is important through the circulatory system the exchange of gases you know transportation of nutrients from one you know from one part to different parts of the body inside the animal takes place so this circulatory system is nothing but transport system right yes so this circulatory system is nothing but transport system there are two types of circulatory system in animals, okay? Few of the animals are having open circulatory system, okay? So open circulatory system is one type and closed circulatory system is another type. Few of the animals are having open circulatory system, okay? Open circulatory system. Open circulatory system means what? You can see this animal, nothing but insect, right? This is an example of insect. Yes. Very good. Very good. Yes. Cockroach and all insects are having open circulatory system, children. Okay. Yes. Let us see. Heart. This is heart. From heart, blood will be pumping. And that blood will flow through major vessels. And from major vessels, the blood is just, you know, flowing into body cavities this is body cavity or sinuses children don't get confused sinus means what body cavity inside this cavity what will be there they will be having organs 
inside the cavities what they are having they are having organs so now the organs are you know just bathing directly in the blood here organs are present in the body cavity as blood flows into body cavity organs directly bath in the blood is it clear children this type of you know circulatory system called open circulatory system this type of circulatory system is called open circulatory system is it clear yes thank you for your response guys now closed circulatory system what is closed circulatory system children see here heart from heart blood is pumping to blood vessels and then to capillaries okay these capillaries will be you know say for example if this is an any organ like you know some tissue in your body capillaries will be you know wrapping around the this is capillary imagine the network of capillary will wrap the tissue okay network of capillary wrap the tissue and from capillary blood will be seeping how see this is blood capillary it is made of single layer of cells you know right yes so from capillary blood will seep like this the content the nutrients the oxygen everything will seep out leak out and next to the capillary you will be having tissue okay this is tissue okay this is tissue this is blood capillary as you know blood capillary made of single layer of cells okay so between single layer of cells there there are spaces okay from the spaces the content inside the blood will seep out to this cavity interstitial space okay from here the nutrient everything will be taken up into tissues okay this is how it works in closed circulatory system you can see here your organs or tissue your organs or tissues are not bathing directly in blood okay so they are taking only nutrients and other essential things they are not directly bathing in blood again from capillary the blood will flow back to heart so there is no leakage that means there is no flow of blood out of this you know uh, blood vessel circulatory system out of this pipeline blood is not flowing anywhere so this type of circulatory system is called closed circulatory system see closed the circuit is closed here the circuit is closed here right yes so this type of circulatory system is called closed circulatory system any doubts in this children any doubts in this any doubt in this circulatory system yes now you might be wondering ma'am which phylum is having open circulatory system and which phylum is having closed circulatory system children very few very few phylums are having open circulatory system i will give the name of you know phylum with open circulatory system such that rest of the phylums will be closed right closed circulatory system i am giving you one word harm h a r m harm okay let us abbreviate this this h stands for hemichordata hemichordata okay a r a r stands for arthropoda okay and this m stands for mollusk okay children mollusk only few are having open circulatory system and few are having closed circulatory system so let us make not all mollusk are open few mollusk i'll put it in bracket now children now tell me what are the phylum 
which are having open circulatory system harm if you remember the abbreviation harm harm i'll come a kind of remember no better see h a r m only these are having only these are having open circulatory system don't get confused look at the slide it's very clear harm okay hemicordata arthropoda and few mollusk so these are open circulatory system clear children this is very easy to remember no harm if you remember the word harm you can remember open circulatory system is it clear children any doubts puja any any doubts here beta these three phylums are having open circulatory system is it clear children puja in echinodermata we have special uh, you know mechanism so uh, when i discuss echinodermata you will get clarification on that okay yeah but it's not necessary beta you are absolutely right you are absolutely right okay uh, echinodermata comes before hemicordata but in echinodermata we have different mechanism okay we have water canal system in that echinodermata okay harm yes hemicordata arthropoda few mollusca very good clear children बेटा पूजा आपका डाउट क्लियर हुआ यस ओके यस नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट सिमेट्री यू नो सिमेट्री इज आल्सो वन ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट क्राइटेरिया फॉर यू नो क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एनिमल्स राइट यस देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सिमेट्री ओके फर्स्ट वन इज अ सिमेट्री thank you for your response guys thank you for your thumbs up asymmetry okay asymmetry means children see if you cut this animal through any of the play if you cut the animal through any of the play okay you cannot get two equal halves right see here no you cannot get two equal halves try to cut it from another direction no this way also you are not getting try diagonally no it's not possible right yes very good asymmetry example sponges okay there are few animals like porifera where you cannot have you know two equal halves through one proper plane that type of uh, animals uh, that type of symmetry is called asymmetry and best example is porifera very good yes so like a, let us look at another type of you know uh, symmetry that is radial symmetry can you see here can you see you cut this animal it's just like umbrella no you cut this animal through any of the plane you get two equal halves see diagonally uh, you know vertically okay you cut it horizontally you cut it diagonally so in all radius you can get two equal halves okay and such such type of you know symmetry is called radial symmetry radial symmetry okay radial symmetry yes divide in the center so very good w beta very good very good you are doing really great thanks for your response see in radial symmetry you know radial symmetry this is radial symmetry along all the radius you can get two equal halves best example for radial symmetry is jellyfish which belongs to cnidaria right cnidaria cnidaria is yes, very good so now third type of you know symmetry is bilateral symmetry third type of symmetry is bilateral symmetry 
Yes, only two halves beta in bilateral, just human beings. If you cut, you know, only through one plane, only through one plane, you are getting two equal halves. Okay, such type of symmetry is called bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry best example chordata what all animals comes under chordata no these are all best example for bilateral symmetry you see let us go back to your flow chart uh yeah see here symmetry Look at the symmetry level of organization. After that, you have symmetry, right? You have symmetry. You see? Asymmetry. Only porifera is having asymmetry. Asymmetry. Porifera is having asymmetry. And then, after that, two, which starts with C and C. Cylindrate and tenophora having radial symmetry. Other than that, what all phylum you have, you are studying under bilateral symmetry. Okay. So only first is asymmetry. After two, the two C's are radial symmetry and rest of the phylums are bilateral. Clear children? So that's why I'm telling you, keep your NCRT with you and follow this chart as I explained. Is it clear children? Are you finding it easy now? Come on, guys, tell me. Are you finding it easy now? Yes. Okay. We have done with some it. Yes. So now we are going to study one more important, you know, uh, level uh, criteria for classification. That is diploblastic and triploblastic organization what is this diploblastic and dip thank you puja thank you dablu thank you naga puja for your response see any doubts just let me know in your qa panel okay yes diploblastic and triploblastic organization blastic blaster have you ever heard blaster blastocyst blastocyst have you ever heard this word yes in embryo layer, when you study about layers of cells in embryo, you heard this word, right? Blastocyl, blastocyst, right? Yes. So in animals, animals, the cells will be arranged in form of embryonic layers. You can see this is embryo, okay? In the embryonic stage, cells are arranged in different layers. Can you see here? This is one layer. This is one layer and this is one layer. Yes. So this type of arrangement of cells. Okay. If any of the animals arrange those cells into two germ layers, only two germ layers, that is outer ectoderm. Outer ectoderm. From here to here. This is outer ectoderm from here to here outer layer of cells and inner endoderm inner side of inner layer of germ layer okay in embryos of few animals the germ cells embryonic cells arrange into two layers one is outer ectoderm okay and another is inner endoderm Okay, such animals are called diploblastic animals. D, D means two, right? Yeah, diploblastic. Blasta means cells of embryo, right? Yes, two layer of cells in embryo. Diploblastic animals. Clear children? Yes. And look at this picture carefully. Between ectoderm and endoderm, you have some pink color, something like, you know, it is called mesoglia. Meso means middle, okay? And remember, this mesoglia is not made of any type of cells, okay? This mesoglia is a non-cellular membrane. Mesoglia is 
non cellular children it is just rich in some protein sugars and all okay so mesoglia is non cellular region between ectoderm and endoderm in case of diploblastic animals you find a non cellular undifferentiated layer and that layer is called mesoglia is it clear children is it clear diploblastic means what is it clear okay now another type of organization see in some of the embryos in some of the animals embryo cells will be arranged in three layers okay outer layer of cells from here to here you can see from here to here outer layer of cells ectoderm okay thank you for your response pooja and the blue ectoderm the outer layer of cells ectoderm and inner layer of cells that is endoderm okay between ectoderm and endoderm these animals are again having cells they are having cells and is called mesoderm see three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm right see ectoderm mesoderm endoderm three layers three means try three triploblastic triploblastic so is it clear children those animals in which embryo cells are arranged into two layers are called diploblastic ectoderm endoderm it's called diploblastic okay between ectoderm and endoderm in case of diploblastic embryos you get a non cellular layer called mesoglia is it clear yes so in case of triploblastic animals the embryonic cells will be arranged into three layers namely ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm all the three layers are made of cells so such type of organ animals are called triploblastic animals triploblastic animals children come back to your slide flow chart yes see from platyhelminthes to last phylum are triploblastic okay the first three are diploblastic is it clear children the first three are diploblastic and other than that all are triploblastic is it clear very good very good for your thumbs up children i love your thumbs up guys as a kind of you know boosting me when i get your thumbs up i feel okay chalo sab theek hai sab kuch theek chal raha hai yes now one more criteria that is coelom 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 means what body cavity coelom means what body cavity okay in simple words yes beta bilateral is diplo diploblastic very good sahi pakad liya aplo aapne aapne sahi pakad liya <laughs> wherever you feel bilateral it is all diploblastic right aapne sahi pakad liya good i am very happy that you are understanding the concept and you are trying to link the things connect the things yes children in simple body cavity okay let us imagine rashmi man or w or pooja whatever naga pooja whoever that imagine yourself this is i am just taking your cross section like this okay not like this i am just taking section okay if it takes section this way i'm sorry for you know uh, rough diagram yes this is your outermost layer can you see me this is body wall this is your body wall and now just imagine you have cut my head here so this is my body wall and in the middle you have something right what is that 
digestive system you have tube here right in the middle you have a tube yes digestive system is also called the digestive alimentary canal alimentary canal Uh, Pooja, he was telling that, you know, okay, let me stop here and go back to previous slide. What he was trying to tell, uh, what he was trying to, you know, all these three are radial and all these are, you know, bilateral, right? All bilateral animals are triploblastic. To remember it easily, all bilateral are triploblastic. Okay, got it, Pooja? W, this is what you're telling, right? Beta Pooja, tell me, you understood this? What the W, W beta was, you know, just giving clue. Ma'am, all bilateral animal, you know, animals, yes, are triploblastic. Oh, yes, got it? Yes. Hamara W ka brain kam karai. <laughs> yes. This is fancy. Okay. Now coming back. See, just imagine if you cut here, you get a tube in the middle that is alimentary canal. Alimentary canal is also called gut. You know that word? Gut. Clear alimentary canal, also called gut. Now, see, this is gut tube. Okay, this is gut tube. Now, this is gut wall. Right? Yes. Now, there is a space between body wall and gut wall, right? This one is nothing but silo. or body cavity silo or body cavity are you people getting this till here it's clear now body cavity the space between the body wall and gut wall is called body cavity till now is clear yes and if you correlate with this, if you gut, gut means alimentary canal beta, your intestine is also called gut. Tube is also called gut. Okay. W clear? Gut means your intestine tube, pipe like structure, it's all called gut. Is it clear? That's why you say gut feeling. <laughs> is it clear? Yes. Can I have thumbs up, W? Thank you, Pooja. Okay. Naga Pooja, are you getting? Okay. See, this, just imagine, this will be ectoderm. This will be endoderm. And the cavity will be lined by mesoderm, right? Now imagine, this cavity can be lined by mesoderm. right yes so the body cavity which is lined by mesoderm is called silo now look at this picture this is ectoderm this is endoderm this is mesoderm this is body wall this is gut wall okay i repeat see this is body wall in this diagram it's body wall Okay, this is what? This is gut wall. Okay, this is ectoderm. And this is endoderm, right? Innermost. And the middle layer, mesoderm. See, this mesoderm has lined the cavity, right? Yes. So this body cavity is lined by mesoderm. Now, you can make a definition. The body cavity, which is lined by mesoderm, is called silo. Do you agree with this, children? 
the body cavity this is body cavity means the cavity between gut wall and the body wall is called body cavity and that cavity is lined by mesoderm is called coelom okay and animals which have coelom is called or are called coelomates animals which are having coelom where the body cavity is lined by mesoderm this is very important body cavity is lined by mesoderm is called coelo and animals are called coelo mates is it clear children okay thank you pooja now look at another type of animal body here mesoderm is you know scattered in pouches in the cavity can you see here mesoderm is just scattered as pouches can you see yes in the if the mesoderm is scattered in pouches between ectoderm and endoderm can you see this is ectoderm right and this is endoderm so between ectoderm and endoderm mesoderm is scattered in pouches such type of you know cavity is called body cavity is called pseudo coelom pseudo coelom pseudo means what just like it's not actually full cavity right cavity like pseudo isn't it pseudo coelom and animals which are having you know pseudo coelom the scattered mesoderm pouches they are called pseudo coelomates pseudo coelomates pseudo coelomates clear yes now pseudo means false very good very good naga puja very good false coelom it's not really true coelom right it's having false coelom like pouches mesoderm pouches are present yes another type is that where you have ectoderm okay you have mesoderm and you have endoderm but there is no body cavity can you see any cavity between these layers no right absent of body cavity so here body cavity is absent such such a type of cavity is called a silo and animals are called a silomates animals are called a silomates is it clear children we have a silomates where there is no body cavity only the endoderm mesoderm and ectoderm are present right so there is no body cavity and in pseudo silomates the mesoderm is you know scattered in pouches and in silomes the mesoderm is lined the cavity right yes so based on this we have you know classified the phylum now these three terminology is clear coelomates acelomates pseudo coelomates clear children yes now i am giving you one clue here these coelomates can you see in diploblastic animals or triploblastic animals the concept of coelom the concept of coelom okay concept of coelom where you see is in diploblastic or triploblastic look at the diagram are these diagram showing diploblastic arrangement or triploblastic arrangement come on guys look at the diagram triploblastic yes that means you see coelom concept only in which type of animals triploblastic animals right only triploblastic animals show coelom characters right yes so coming back to your flow chart children where you have ha huh, this flow chart see here from which from which phylum you you are having triploblastic from which phylum you are having triploblastic condition tell me look at the slide and tell me from which you are having triploblastic condition 
Come on, guys, type quickly. In which of the phylum, from which phylum you have triploblastic condition, children? Tell me. Where are you guys? Pooja, Nagapuja, W. Where are you? Just tell me. Yes, see. From platyhelminthes to chordata, you are having triploblastic. That means you have coelom concept in this. You don't have coelom concept in porifera, cylindrata, and tenophora. Okay? Yes. So if you look at evolution wise, a coelom means animals without triploblastic animals without body cavity are first, right? Yes. Platyhelminthes are a silomates as calmanthus pseudo silomate because as calmanthus are slightly evolved than platyhelminthus so you get to see pseudo silo and other than as calmanthus what all you have from anilida to cordata they're all silomates they are silomates so first tri triploblastic animal tri first triploblastic phylum platyhelminthus uh, silomates Second one, Ascalmanthus. Ascalmanthus, uh, next evolved form is pseudo. So Ascalmanthus are pseudo -silomates. And next to Ascalmanthus, whatever comes, they are highly evolved than Ascalmanthus. So all they are having, silo. So pseudo -silo, sorry, a silo are primitive compared to pseudo -silomates. And pseudo -silomates are primitive compared to silo -mates. So an evolutionary point of view, a silo are first, and then evolved to pseudo silomates and then evolved to silomates. Is this clear, children? Is this clear? Any doubts? No, beta. It's not last slide. Still, you have so many things to study. Okay. Yes. Another important uh, term, notochord. Okay. Notochord is a rod like structure. Thank you for your response. Yes. Notochord is a rod like structure. And this rod like structure is derived from mesoderm. Look at this diagram. Okay. So this is notochord. And is derived from which germ layer? You have three germ layers, right? Ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm. Yes. This notochord is deriving from mesoderm. And it is a rod-like structure. And it is formed on the dorsal side. See, this is ventral side. If you make it clear half, like this okay this is ventral side and this is dorsal side okay on the dorsal side this notochord will be formed in embryos of some animals embryo of some animals yes so those animals which have notochord are called chordates This is very important. The animals which are having notochords are called as chordates, and those animals which are not having notochord are called non chordates. Yes, yes, dorsal means backside. Most of the time, you children, you know, uh, you get confused with that word. dorsal and ventral okay so I'll, i i'm coming to that point now tell me is it clear chordata and non chordate chordates and non chordates it's clear chordates are having notochord non chordates are not having notochord so in your chat from porifera to echinodermata all are non chordates going back to your chat Yeah, see, from porifera to echinodermata, all are non-chordates. Okay? 
पोरीफेरा टू Yes, echinodermata, all are non-caudates. Yes, children. Children, most of the times, you know, when you hear the word dorsal and ventral, you get confused. Dorsal means back or front. Ventral means back or front. I am giving you one clue here. You write dorsal like this, though. Dorsal. D. I am again writing dorsal. Dorsal. Okay. What is the first letter here? D. small d right i write it in reverse order b is it clear now whenever you get confused dorsal is backward friend yes dorsal start with d just reverse the first letter what it will be b backward back side clear guys isn't it easy is it to remember dorsal ventral <laughs> yes can i have thumbs up for giving you this clue mera to thoda banta hai na rishwat yes ventral means front okay so any doubts your children in cordate non cordates dorsal ventral and all ओके थैंक यू फॉर योर रिस्पॉन्स गाइस ओके सो चलो देखते हैं फिर या सी दिस इज व्हाट योर चार्ट नाउ यू आर क्लियर विद दिस चार्ट राइट सो विद ऑल दीज कॉन्सेप्ट्स वी आर क्लासिफाइड द वी क्लासिफाइड द एनिमल्स इनटू How many phylums? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven phylum, right? Eleven phylum. So now you know. Oriferae are cellular. Cilentrata, tinofora are tissue or radial. Platyhelminthes are acylomates. Or uh, as ascalminthes are you know bilateral, triploblastic, pseudocilomate, and rest all bilateral, triploblastic, silomates, right? yes now i am going to give a formula to remember these 11 phylums in an order children always remember these to 11 phylums in an order increasing order first porifera and then cilentrata then tinofora then platyhelminthes ascalminthes anilida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordate and chordata okay so you should remember in this order only now can you tell me can you tell me the name first letters of all these phylum can you tell me the first letters first letters of all the phylum okay let's start p porifera okay c for cilentrata another c for tinofora one more p for platyhelminthes then a for ascalminthes anilida arthropoda then m for mollusca e from echinodermata h hemichordata c chordata right yes so can we try to short it shall i make it as this way p c square P A Q. Mahek. Mahek means kushbu, right? Mahek. See, P C square, P A Q, Mahek. First P refers to porifera that you know. Then cilentrata in your textbook. Then tinofora, platyhelminthes, ascalminthes, anilida, arthropoda, mollusca, echinodermata, hemichordata, and chordata. Done. P C square, P A Q, Mahek. You know, if you split, you know which comes first: cilentrata and tinofora. Then in A Q also you know, anilida first. Sorry, ascalminthes, anilida, and arthropoda. Right? Is this abbreviation mnemonic is easy for you to remember, children? 
come on guys ha yes ye to trick wala trick hua na hamara yes so now do you find animal kingdom easy is your not guys yes okay chalo so now let us start the phylum first that is porifera let us just introduce to phylum and wind up the session and remaining thing will uh, discuss in next session okay yes very good w very good yes porifera porifera are also called sponges because you you just look at the image they look like sponges full of pores pores okay yes these porifera are mainly aquatic animals few of them are marine that means they you find in sea water marine and few are in fresh water so fresh water example is spongila children this is fresh water form spongila you can see no it, it just look like you know tandoor chicken like thing <laughs> yeah it is spongila fresh water okay and these two this is cycon a is cycon b is u spongia cycon and u spongia okay cycon also called cypha okay <coughs> these two are marine form guys this looks like your bathing sponge no the sponge what you use to bath scrub your body right yes so u spongia is also called bath sponge u spongia also called bath sponge right yes and now you know you learned about habitat okay and now look at the symmetry see it's a symmetry right you cannot make it into equal half through any of the planes so a symmetry level of organization is cellular level of organization is cellular clear yes and if you take uh, you know the body of porifera it has many minute pores on its surface many minute pores you can see in the previous slide okay there are many minute pores okay these minute pores are called ostia ostia okay and in the middle here there is one big 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 opening and it is called osculum osculum okay yes now water enters through water enters through pores okay and exit through osculum single outlet that is osculum no oh, beta you cannot uh, say it's that that way okay it's thought water canal yeah of course water is very important here water enters through pores and just travels through cavity in the center there is a big cavity can you see here this cavity is called spongocele spongocele central cavity spongocele and now the water in the spongocele goes out of the body through osculum osculum is excrement pore means going out sending out ostium ostia ostia is plural beta ostium is singular okay so from pores you can see pores here from ostia water enters the body yes and if you look at this diagram carefully you have some collar like cells conocytes conocytes also called collar cells can you see here they are having flagella can you see observe carefully they are having flagella and they are called conocytes or collar cells what is the importance of these conocytes or collar cells see water which enters the ostia comes to spongocele now these conocytes the flagella of conocytes you know It, it 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 moves as it moves it creates some waves in the water inside the spongocele now 
the food and you know uh, the gases in that water can be easily made available to the cells of the porifera exchange will become easier okay so creating a water current wave inside the sponge seal the conocyte help in exchange of gases capture food and all and next to con conocytes you have big big cells called amebocytes amebocytes these amebocytes mainly helps in capture of food like you know whatever the food that comes to water uh, with the help of conocytes they will be grabbed inside the amebocyte and this amebocyte will do digestion inside them clear guys clear yes in between conocyte and amebocyte can you see yellow color substance here yeah it is nothing but skeleton of porifera it is nothing but skeleton of porifera see we have bones right in our skeleton the same way in sponges in porifera they have skeleton made of spicules or spongin fibers they are mainly made of you know calcium and silica okay spicules and spongin fibers are the skeleton of porifera and these spicules and spongin are made of mainly calcium and silica guys generally further porifera phylum can be classified into different classes you know calcarea desmospongia and all based on the presence of types of spicules but as it is not there for your ncrt syllabus i am not breaking your head i'm not going that much deep so let us stick on to ncrt because for your board as well as need ncrt is your bible okay yes so guys the skeleton of porifera is made of spicules yes and coming to reproduction they are bisexual animals that means male and female sex organs are in same animal body hence they are called hermaphrodite okay yes so when it comes they do both type of fertilization asexual fertilization and uh, sorry asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction if it is asexual reproduction it takes place by fragmentation when water current you know fragments the body of the sponges each fragment can be grown regenerate into new animal sexual reproduction is by gamete fusion just like egg and sperm fusion now this fusion of egg and for sperm that is fertilization is internal internal means it takes place inside the body of sperm just like human like how the fusion of egg and sperm takes inside no yes if fertilization is inside the animal body then it is called internal fertilization okay development see after you know making babies how it will be first baby will be you know larva and then it become adult porifera like this okay now see the baby larva which has born is similar to adult no so earlier it is having different and then it is in adult it is different morphology like your tadpole of frog the frog baby tadpole earlier it looks like larva fish and then in adult it, it looks like proper frog right so such type of development is called indirect development you have a larva in the initial stage and then it will get transformed to adult which is entirely morphologically look wise different from the larva so this type of development is called indirect development children is it clear you need to remember only this much from porifera any doubts your any doubts no doubts okay so uh, for for today this is enough and from tomorrow next session we will start with next phylum that is cylindrata okay before concluding today uh, i have uh, taken some uh, quiz questions for you let us uh, do two to three quiz questions quickly okay tell me which of the following cells are found only in porifera just now we discussed which of the following cells you found in porifera reply quickly come on come on
वेरी गुड डब्ल्यू बेटा आंसर तो कर दो कॉनोसाइट कॉनोसाइट आर द सेल्स फाउंड इन पोरीफेरा ओके विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज फाउंड इन स्पॉन्जेस ओनली मीसुगलियो नर्व सेल्स वन एग्जिट न्यूमरस इनलेट्स न्यूमरस इनलेट्स many ways many ways remember mesoglia you you get in other animals also mesoglia you get in other animals other diploblastic animals okay you your question is only in sponges only in sponges you have numerous inlets ostia okay yes yes children from here i got question for next porifera uh, phylum okay anyhow uh, in next session we'll be continuing with uh, cylindrata and then we'll do more and more quizzes on the cylindrata and other phylum okay hope you enjoy today's session and you learned a lot with easy tricks and super amazing some clues okay yes so if you like the session uh, please rate us and uh please if you have any doubts post it in qa panel i'll be very happy to answer you guys okay please do like share this basidio uh, classes and try to share uh, to your friends as well spread the information and help the others who are in need of this okay thank you children please don't forget to rate rate me and please 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 as much as possible share the uh, share the basidio sessions okay Bye, children. Bye, Jablu. Bye, Pooja. Bye, Naga Pooja. Bye. Take care. Take care. We'll meet in next session. Okay. Bye, children. Thank you.